yeah, I think the RDP um, showed a wonderful expression of where we were in that 1990 period. Uh, the orientation to the people, uh, the best of our principles, etc. And it gets going, and you remember a man called Jay Naidu. Um, at the same time, what is happening, and I'll say this to you because I speak out, Trevor Manuel and a small group of the economic sector in Shell House, we paid no attention to us, no attention to them. More fools us because it's the economy stupid. But we were looking at political power, we were looking at campaigning, we were looking at the election. I was one of those. We didn't pay any attention to where the real engine is. And these were a small group with Tito and others um, going off to the IMF, Maria Ramos, and going off to America, getting that kind of training, the ear of Mbeki, the ear of Madiba, and Davos. So this particular strand gets going and has expression in gear, which snuffs out the RDP, obviously. And that's the Faustian pact. And we're now on that trajectory. And remember what happens to Faust at the end of the pact with the devil. That sellout. He's condemned to hell. And this is what's happening. The country's being condemned to hell and Marakana's hell. And development, there was the question about the development factor in that platinum belt. Where is Gwedi Mantash, Cyril Ramaphosa, Khalima Motlanti, all the big shots of the mining union? I mean, I feel bad having been at the helm of NEC and SACP. And I could kick myself. Where was I? Why wasn't I going to those mining settlements to see the absolute dreadful conditions that we were allowing our people to live under? Why didn't we do just a damn simple thing? Make the bloody mining houses pay 5% of their profits into a housing plan to ensure that there's decent living conditions for the people who are digging the wealth up. That's not nationalization, that's just use of taxes. We, we fled from the question of heavy taxation, of the business economic community of this country and their 150 years of exploitation. Absolutely disgraceful. It's a disgrace on me, quite frankly. But at least let's get to talk about these things. Zimbabwe. I just want to give you a short anecdote. Gavin Reilly and company from Anglo, they come out in 1985 and they meet Tambo and Mbeki, Apala Jordan and a small group from the ANC in, in, in one of the game parks in Zambia. And this is the first meeting and it's big business. Eh? This is the corporates of South Africa. And they're sitting there with half a dozen of our guys, half a dozen of them. And it's clear the ANC are seeing that these guys are not that against the idea of a universal franchise and the idea of democracy in its particular sense, you know, voting once every four or five years. But the issue that Gavin really raises is, you know, Mr. Tambo, we can move on a number of things, but please, this issue that you guys go on about all the time, nationalization, huh? the dreaded N-word, nationalization, please, you can't come with that. If that's the ANC's line, we, we're not, we're not going to be interested. The person who convened the meeting and had decided to leave the group, but they made him stay, Kenneth Kaunda, and he sat there quietly while the debate goes on. So he leans forward and he says, excuse me, Mr. Reilly, Anglo-American, you've done a deal with me in Zambia, 51%, 49%. If you can do it in Zambia, well, leave out the problems that happen in Zambia because that's where you've got bureaucracy in charge, state bureaucracy, etc. Uh, why can't you do it in South Africa? What happened to our ANC that they could face these guys then and talk nationalization? Fasting impact. That's the bloody sellout. That's why we're in this dilemma now.